morning. Our service this morning is from the Book of Common Prayer, which you should find in your seats. And uh, just a reminder, if you do get up to move, please put on your mask before you get out of your seat and try to keep six feet from everybody who's not in your bubble this morning. And uh, thank you so much for coming, and then we'll now begin our time of worship. Let us kneel as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and we pray for these and laws in our hearts to deceive us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The colleague for today. Merciful Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all of our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for proclamation of the word. O Israel, 
My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I will have no war, for it is not in my own will. I am in entrust to a new commission. What is there not in war? Justice. That is my proclamation that I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make people use of my rights in the gospel. But though I am free with respect to all, I pay myself a slave for all, so that I might win more of them, the Jews I became and as is, nor the women Jews. Though to those under the law, I became more under the law, though myself am not under the law. So I might win those under the law, those outside the law, and I became more outside the law. So that I might, what? To the weak, I became weak, so that
Gospel reading. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and he told Jesus about her at once. And Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And a whole city gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to the deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found Jesus, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went through Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated and I welcome Kelsey up there to our children's talk. Experiences daily. And 
we need to come to church each week. Please bow your heads to pray for our recharging. God, help us to remember that just as our bodies must be renewed by proper rest, our spirit must be renewed by spending time with you in prayer, Bible study, and worship. In Jesus' name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In our Gospel reading today, we hear that Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew. And Simon's mother lies sick and bed with fever. And Jesus goes and takes her by the hand and heals her, and she begins to serve them. Word of all the healings that Jesus has done has really started to spread around the community. People have all gathered, they say the whole city has gathered around the door. They all wanted to know what was going on. They all wanted their sick family members to be healed. And they had brought many who were sick. And it says that Jesus cured many of them. But it didn't say that he cured all of them. That he cured many. Today, God still chooses to heal some of those people who are sick. And healing stories, especially certain ones, are really exceptional. And, and they're, they're so inspiring that people write stories about them and even make movies about them so that everybody will know what happened. Did anybody here see the movie Miracles from Heaven? No? It's a movie that was written a few years ago, and it's the story of Annabelle Bean. And Annabelle is a little five-year-old girl who becomes sick. And for months, her family is searching for a cure to find out what, first they need a diagnosis to find out what's going on with Annabelle. But you know, they go to different doctors, they're saying different things, but nothing seems to work in making their daughter well. Finally, she's diagnosed with an incurable digestive condition called pseudo obstruction mobility disorder. Annabelle's body cannot process food. She can eat, but it doesn't move through her digestive system. And it causes a lot of pain, a lot of bloating, and she's very uncomfortable. So they finally find a specialist who can help her with some of the symptoms, but they know there's nothing that they can do to cure her. And all they can do is try to improve her quality of life. During all this time, her mother, Christy Bean, has what we would call the crisis of her faith. Why hasn't God healed her daughter? Why hasn't God made things better for her? Because they are faithful Christians. They're praying all the time. They're bringing their prayers to God. But why hasn't he made a difference? So one day she talks to her pastor and she says, Why does a loving God allow Annabelle to suffer like this. The pastor sat with her and he didn't really have an answer. But he said, just because she's sick does not mean that there's not a loving God. He said that in the lowest times of his life, he has tried to go ways. He has tried to connect with God. And he has tried walking away. And he says that one way, the 
experience a life better than the other. The beings continue on in their journey with Annabelle. There's many hospital visits. There's medication that she has to take every day. I think at one point they said 10, 10 different medications each day to try to control her condition. And Annabelle is living in pain all the time. At one point when it was an especially low point in her life when she was in hospital, nine-year-old Annabelle even said she wanted to die and go to heaven so she wouldn't be in pain any longer. This was an especially hard time for all of the family. But her whole condition, her whole situation changed in December of 2011. On this particular day, Annabelle's sisters encouraged her to come outdoors and play. And they went down and decided to climb a tree. So they went to the top of this uh, old cottonwood tree that was near their house. And while they were up there, the branch started to crack. So Annabelle's sister Abby said, go towards the center of the tree, because the branch had come, fallen off and was a little hole there. So Annabelle ran over to the center of the tree, and when she did, she went head down first into the rather out trunk of the tree. Emergency crews arrived, and they took them five hours before they could finally get Annabelle safely out of the tree. So Annabelle was lifted to the hospital, and they ran all kinds of tests to check her for injuries, because of course, after falling 30 feet onto her head, most likely there was going to be injuries. But miraculously, Annabelle was not injured in the fall. And even more amazing, according to Annabelle's mother, Christine, after the fall, her daughter's symptoms seemed to vanish. One day when she was talking to Annabelle, she said that while she was in the tree, she had a visit to heaven. It was a beautiful place, and while she was there, she sat in Jesus' lap. When she talked to Jesus, she said that she wanted to stay there with him because she wanted to be able to escape all the pain that she was experiencing in her life on earth. But Jesus responded in this way. He said, no, Annabelle. He said, I have plans for you on earth that you cannot fulfill in heaven. Whenever I send you back, there will be nothing wrong with you. Of course, Annabelle thought this would mean there would be no broken bones, there would be no injuries from the fall. But when she went back, they noticed that her condition no longer existed. She wasn't in this pain that she was in every single day. And her life started to return to normal. She could be the same little joyful, happy little girl that she always was before she took over with this disorder. Some people believe in the being stories and that Annabelle had an experience with Jesus and that she was healed. And other people choose not to believe because there's always people who doubt. But regardless of what you choose to believe, Annabelle was sent them free after her accident, and she could finally return to living a pain-free life. Her story can be found on YouTube, and if you want to Google it, you can Google and even have interviews with the uh, real parents in the story because, of course, Hollywood did add a few things into the movie. The movie is available on Netflix, Miracles from Heaven. But at the end of the movie, they put a quote in there from Albert Einstein. And it says, there's two ways that you can live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. And the other is as though everything is a miracle. Miracles happen every single day. Healing takes place. And often we just take it all for granted, you know, that that's the way it's supposed to be. And we don't understand and we don't want to see that God is in all the wonderful things that happen each and every day. I know I choose to believe that God is involved in our everyday lives, that God touches us and God makes us well. Now we know that not everyone is healed. Sometimes sickness happens. And just as that day in the gospel reading, Jesus didn't heal everybody that was back to the door, but he healed many of them. And today many are healed, but not all. 
my belief that stories like miracles of heaven were written and produced for much the same reason as what the Gospels were. They were written to give us hope, to inspire us to faith, and to know that anything is possible with God. These stories lift us up, and because of that, we can give glory to God for all the wonderful things that he has done for our lives. I want to leave you with these words that were spoken by the uh, character who played Christy Bean. And what she said at the end of the movie when she was uh, speaking to her congregation about the, the wonderful healing that had taken place in her family. She said, miracles are everywhere. Miracles are goodness, showing up in the strangest ways. Dear friends who are there for us no matter what. Miracles are love. Miracles are God. And God is forgiveness. Why was Annabelle healed when there were so many children suffering? I do not know the answer. But after everything I have been through, I realize that I am not alone. And you are not alone. Miracles are God's way of letting us know that he is near. So may we always be willing to believe in the miracles that can happen in our lives. May we always be willing to praise God for the, the healing that he does in the simple little acts and in the big events also. But may we always be willing to have open eyes and be able to search our world and find wonderful places where healing has taken place and be able to give God the glory for all the wonderful things he has done. Amen. Please stand now to say the words of the Nicene Creed and are found on page 71. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and ascended on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Offer unto God the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High.
Make us one with him who is our peace, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Be then truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and I love and share you with your neighbor. And intend to me to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meek and kneeling upon your knees. Thy divine majesty, 
we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, for the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart of repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear our comfortable words, our Savior Christ, say to all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all believe in him that should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet and right in our bound of duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, he most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine. According to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O 
humble Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do we make before thee, in this sacrament of holy bread of eternal life, and a cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he had commanded. We entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of his holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this side to be the oh, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the promise of thy table. For thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord. So we eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the tender of his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold, O Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world, have your day or call to the supper of glory. who's receiving communion today. Uh, if you want to receive, please stand up in your seats. Uh, put your mask on when we come down and you can take them off once we leave, but please keep your mask on when we're at the ministry of communion. And then uh, you'll have to carry this out the system this morning, so we'll uh, do communion on the other side.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. We are also here is true hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bell of duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. We stand for glory. Glory be to thee, our high, and in earth peace and goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for everybody for worshiping with us this morning. It's great to have you all here. Uh, just a couple of notes in the bulletin to bring your attention to. I want to be a Leaving a pilgrim course starting this Tuesday uh, morning, beginning at 10.30, and that will be offered online on Zoom. So anybody who has a laptop, a smartphone, a uh, tablet can all join on that way. Uh, so if you want to join, just send an email off to the Anglican Parish, and I'll send you the Zoom link so that you can connect. And that way we can uh, safely continue on with our six weeks of the course. It's a six-week six course. But if anything does happen and things start to slow down, we don't need to uh, cancel what we're doing. We can still meet our line. Uh, we're collecting uh, food bank items in our churches now uh, each Sunday. So anybody wants to make a contribution to the food bank, please bring your food items along with worship, and we will make sure that they get forwarded to a helping hand. And in the bulletin, there's some suggested items that are uh, always in need at the food bank. So if you're ever wondering what to bring, you can just look at the list that's in your bulletin. Uh, there's a parish council meeting this week uh, that'll be on Zoom, a vestry meeting next week for St. Matthews and a week after for St. John's. So all of that will also be held online, which is really nice for really, in these wintry nights that nobody needs to go out and get in the cold car afterwards and worry about if there's going to be a snowstorm and if we've got to cancel. So we can always be down on. And the thing is with Zoom, if you can't have a computer, you can always call me in and you can still hear everything that's going on. So there's no excuses not to be there. Uh, Centering prayer takes place, um, as Kelsey said, over a Thursday morning in St. John Evangelist Hall. That's at 10.30. And that's a form of meditative prayer, so you're all welcome to join us for that. Just call the church and register if you'd like to come along. And any other uh, announcements are dear in the bulletin? We still need to ash Wednesday. It's hard to believe how quick time is going.
but it's just um, a couple weeks then we'll leave the wax Wednesday and our first service is going to be here at St. John the Evangelist Church. So uh, we'll do the same the process as registering for our Sunday worship. We call in and let us know that you're coming. And after that we'll be doing joint services with the parishes of um, Port of Grave, Resurrection, and Shears Town. We'll all be getting together for our wedding services. And we'll be uh, going from building to building the on each week, Wednesday during the week. So thank you so much everybody for joining us today. It's great to have you all here. Thank you to Jean and our singers this morning for lifting up your voices on our behalf. And we'll all look forward to when we can finally get together and sing praises to God ourselves. And hopefully before long that's all going to happen. So we're going to have our closing hymn now. That is our mighty word. 